Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this way we're going to cover the muscles of the forearm. So these are not generally as important as some of the other muscles, so I'll try to go through them a little faster, but there are a lot of them. So I want to give you some general advice first. The names are usually very, very helpful. Uh, so the flexors. So flexors are going to usually be on the front of the forearm and they're going to flex the wrist, whereas extensors will be on the back. But then you can get other tips. So like if you see like uh, uh, the first one we're going to cover is the flexor carpi radialis. Well, flexor tells you it flexes. Carpi, meaning wrist, tells you what it flexes, and radialis tells you it's also on the radial or thumb side, which means we know that not only does it flex the wrist, but it pulls the wrist towards the thumb, which is called abduction or a movement towards the thumb. So that's the first one, the flexor carpi radialis, flexion and abduction. So if you're in the anatomical position, I can't show you, you know, abduction would be moving your, uh, your hands towards your thumb. So flexor carpi radialis, flexion and abduction of the wrist. Flexor carpi ulnaris, so flexor carpi tells you it does flex the wrist, but it's on the ulnar side, so it's going to be involved in adduction, moving your wrists towards your pinky finger. So that's the flexor carpi radialis and ulnaris, so they both work together. At, they're synergists when it comes to wrist flexion, but they're antagonists. They're the opposite of each other um, when it comes to abduction and adduction. Then we have the palmaris longus there near the middle, also going to flex the wrist. Um, flexor digitorum superficialis, so first of all, flexes the digit, so flexion of your fingers instead of the wrist, flexor digitorum. Superficialis tells you it's a superficial muscle, meaning a deeper one will be on one of the next images, and that's going to be called profundus. So superficialis means superficial, profundus means deep. Think about like a profound thought, a mind-blowing thought is very deep. Profundus, that's how I remember it. All right, so that's the flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, palmaris, longus, um, which uh, just another little hit, a little tip there. I think about 10% of people don't have it. So some people just don't have this muscle. And then the flexor digitorum superficialis. Next one here, just got a couple, flexor pollicis longus. So pollicis means pollux or thumb. So the flexor pollicis longus is going to flex the tip of your thumb. There is a shorter one, but that's going to be in the hand, and I won't do a video on that at this time. Maybe I'll do it in the, in the future. So flexor pollicis longus flexes the tip of your thumb. Then we have flexor digitorum profundus. Remember we just said flexor digitorum superficialis flexes your fingers and is superficial. This one is a deep muscle. Muscle, profundus meaning deep, flexor digitorum profundus, flexion of the fingers. All right, longest list here, we have brachioradialis already covered, starts in the brachial region, travels down the radius, flexion of the elbow, so it's the only muscle that's in the forearm that's function is above it at the elbow, not, uh, not down towards the hand. The anconius there, it also plays a role in elbow extension, so you could say the anconius works with the triceps to extend the elbow. Then we have the extensor carpi radialis longus, so it extends the wrist, extensor carpi. It's on the radial surface, so it's involved in extension and abduction towards the thumb. And then it's the long one, which means there's going to be the next one, which is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So longus means long, brevis, think brevity, think brief. Brevis means short. So extensor carpi radialis brevis, same function, it's just the shorter muscle of the two. So extension and abduction towards the thumb. Then we have the extensor carpi ulnaris, extends the wrist, and then adduction of the wrist towards the away from the thumb or towards your pinky finger. Extensor carpi ulnaris. Next we have extensor digitorum, extends the digits, uh, like the name implies. Extensor digiti minimi extends your pinky finger, so your smallest digit, digiti minimi. So that's the extensor digiti minimi. Abductor pollicis longus, remember pollux means your thumb, so the abductor pollicis longus abducts the thumb, takes the thumb away from the rest of your hand. Extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis, remember the longa, longus will be the long one, brevis means brief or short will be the shorter one, both of them extend the thumb. So extensor pollicis longus and brevis both extend the thumb. Last one here, we have the supinator, which, like the name implies, is involved in supination. We now have the abductor pollicis longus, which abducts the thumb. These We've covered these, but you can see them in this image as well. Extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis, they both extend the thumb. Flexor digitorum profundus, so it's so deep you can see it on the other side of the arm. Flexor digitorum profundus will flex your fingers. 
flexor carpial nerus, you see there on the side, that will flex the wrist and move it towards the ulna or away from the thumb, so that's called adduction. And then we have the last one, extensor indices, which extends your index or pointer finger. Okay, so that's all the key muscles of the forearm I want you to know. Like I said, I may do a separate video in the future about the hand, but I'm not going to cover that at this point. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.